This video explores fragments in Android. It's the fourth part of a seven-part series. In this video we introduce dynamic fragments. The objectives are stated here with a timeline for when they appear in the video. This is a preview of a longer video. Visit ProfessorAndroid.com for more information. Okay, so if you're watching these videos in order, the order I intended you to, <laughs> we just finished up with a demo of static fragments single activity. Now let's just take a quick review of what we did there and talk about how what we're going to do now is going to be just slightly different. In a layout large folder we defined we defined our user interface for when we're going to be running on a tablet and and what we did there is we set an ID to the linear layout to linear layout large and then we statically put in two fragments meaning both fragments are always there. Then we made an identical layout file in our default folder that we generally think of as being for a phone when there's less real estate and we set an ID of root layout default. Other than that, those two layout files were identical except for the ID and we always statically defined two fragments which meant they always lived in memory. So if we just look at this portion of our view tree starting from this linear layout, we know that we have a linear layout and that we created two fragments. Our list frag and our detail frag. We'd always call in fragment A, the list frag, and fragment B, the detail frag, amber and blue. And of course, when we were running on a tablet, we could, which we knew because of the ID that we would grab from the linear layout based on the layout large folder, we always had both fragments in what was called the show mode, or you can think of it as being visible because there were methods called show and hide. And so then when we were working with a phone, we still always had A, amber list frag, and B, blue detail frag in the view tree. They always existed. It's just that we sometimes invoked show and hide methods so that we only saw one at a time. But the important thing to understand is both of these fragments always existed in the view tree under both scenarios, tablet and phone. It's just that when we were on a phone, we hid one from our view, invoking the hide method. We made it visible again, invoking the show methods, but both fragments were always attached in the view tree and always existed in memory. Now, the approach that we're going to take now is going to be slightly different. We're going to come in here for our, when we come in here for our tablet approach, that is going to stay identical. We're going to statically define activity A, amber, the list frag, statically define activity B, blue, the detail frag, and both of those will always exist in memory. We're on a tablet. The layout can really be identical to how it was when we were dealing with static fragments on this dynamic fragment demo when we're dealing with the tablet because the tablet's the same. We're always seeing both of them. But then the thing we want to do differently is to say, well, when we're running on a phone, I only want a there, or I only want B there, but I don't want A and B there both in memory at the same time. When I switch to B, I kill off A. When I switch to A, I kill off B, and there is only one fragment in the view tree at one time. And so I've done a couple things while I was offline to get ready for this next stage of the demo. Let's take a look at what those are. I've added a static fragment single activity. I've added dynamic fragment single activity which will show fragments A and B or just A or just B similar to how static fragment did in our previous demo. I have gone in and registered this activity in the manifest file. I've added dynamic fragment single activity and I've gone ahead and set labels for both of those for the static fragment and the dynamic fragment to make it more apparent which activity we're actually on when we're running the demo. And of course in dynamic fragment single activity I'm inflating a layout file. Two layout files that I've added. Dynamic fragment single activity for one running on a large device and then I put in a dynamic fragment single activity in our default folder as well. And we'll take a look at those in a moment. Of course the other thing I've done is gone into my main activity and wired up my dynamic fragments button click event so it now launches the new dynamic fragment single activity demo. So that's where we're at so far. 
And what we need to do now is go in and take, and take a look at these two new layout files and do some work there. Now, I try to throw in some little tidbits along the way. So here's a little tidbit. We know that dynamic fragment single activity inflates this layout. So we know it's going to inflate the one in the large folder or it's going to inflate the one in the default folder. But we know when it's on the large folder that it really needed to look the same as the static fragment one. I'm going to statically define two fragments. Even though this is the dynamic demo, that's going to only apply when we have a single fragment we need to show. When we always still need to show both of them, I'm going to keep that static. So these two layouts could really look exactly the same. So when I created this one, I could have just copied and pasted this one inside of this one. And it would have all been good. But instead of doing that, here's what I did to show a little tidbit. Is Here's an include. So what this does is it says, I'm creating dynamic fragment single activity. I just gave it a frame layout so it can hold only one thing. And then inside there I said include layout static fragment single activity which means all this layout does is include this layout inside it. So essentially this layout is this layout because all it does is include it. What you're able to do with that include is, is you're able to combine other layout files to make a new layout file. In this particular example I wanted was all of this layout file inside of this layout file and that works fine. Or, of course, I could have just copy and pasted all this code into here. If I wanted there to be any visual difference between the static fragment and dynamic fragment when it's showing on the tablet, then I would have likely copied and pasted this code over and done my tweaks. So we're in where dynamic fragment single activity, and we say inflate our layout. If we're on a large device, it's going to find this one in the large folder and of course that one's going to actually just include this one because we want them to look exactly the same. However, if we're on a smaller device, we're going to use our dynamic fragment idea. All I've done to get ready for this so far is I've copied the static fragment single activity code into dynamic fragment single activity and let's open that up, take a look and tweak it. So, we have a few different approaches we can take here. We know we're not going to statically add any fragments at all, so we're just going to delete. And in fact, we could leave this alone right here. What we're going to see we do with dynamic fragments is, we're going to say, find me a place in my layout where I can attach a fragment. And once we have a handle to this linear layout in our code, we can say, attach a fragment right here. So that's one approach we can take is to say we've already got this linear layout right here. Why not go ahead and attach the fragment right here inside this linear layout and that works great. In fact this linear layout is set to horizontal so if I did a fragment transaction and attached two fragments to this linear layout the one I attached first would be on the left and one that I attached second would be next to it on the right. Likewise, if that was on vertical, the one I attached first would be on top and the one I attached second would be on the bottom. So actually just by removing the two statically placed fragments from this layout, we have what we need for our dynamic fragments. Because we can attach things at this point in the view tree using this ID.